darling. My name is Artemis Thelis and thanks for tuning in. Today we are tapping into another pick a card reading because that is what I do. Honestly, because I just, I was not ready yet to inch in my other talents and skills. So we are back with another pick a card reading, right? Today we are tapping into like a message for your inner child. I'm going to tap into what you wanted to be when you wanted to grow up. What are problems that would stand in your way in life and advice or extra tidbits that come out at the end? Super chill, super like lighthearted. Honestly, though, when I was tapping into the own energy, I almost made myself cry because it's just like, you know, kid, you it was so pure, so innocent. So, yeah. So, of course, we're going to have four piles today because I refuse to do anything less. Here is a clip of the piles. Feel free to pause the video, meditate, figure out which one is calling your name remember say it with me now if it doesn't fit it ain't shit all right if the message doesn't resonate it was not meant for you take the parts that were leave the rest behind this is a general reading and in the description bar you'll find the times so without further ado hello pie one what is up today we are tapping into a message for your inner child okay tapping into what you want it to be when you want to grow up problems that will stand in your way in life and advice or extra tidbits that want to come out so <sighs> fire one all right because you know me i just formatted this right before we started so i got my little sticky what did you want to be I won. i actually brushed my hair today how are you guys feeling you brushing your hair you getting out of bed you brushing your teeth if you're not stick with it the good times are rolling soon. I hope you find the motivation. And if you've been on your P's and Q's, check you out. Look at you, having a routine and whatnot. I'm proud of you. Oh, you was a fast little kid. Okay, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm not judging. That's just what's coming up. But let me dig in deeper. So all these cards want to pop out. I didn't want these many cards. Mmm. This group loves to, loves to, loves to, loves to come my way. All right, first of all, how do I want to word this? Okay, pile one. If you were a victim of life, if you were like, could have been on the episode of Law and Order SVU, you know, that type of energy has crossed your path in life. I am so genuinely grateful that you have found the strength to survive what has happened to you because you are so necessary and really need to be here. Anyway, on the bottom of the deck, not anyway, like it doesn't matter. I'm just saying like, anyway, let's move on with the reading. Um, So on the bottom of the deck, we have Child Magical. And this was like a hidden part of you. It says seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things, the belief that everything is possible. I feel like you were definitely this kid, this person who's like, anything's possible. You know, you're a kid, like anything's possible. We can do so many things. But you being a victim also, when certain realities didn't come to play, when certain things, you know, no one came to save you with the Disney princesses and no shining knight in shining armor came to save you type of energy. When that realization set in, it was kind of like, like you were that kid that's like oh it'll be great it'll be good I feel like mm, you had maybe like two older brothers and you were the younger sibling and you're like mom's gonna come home she's gonna pick us up she's gonna visit and they're like yeah all right and they're on the couch and you're like waiting in the window like she said she was gonna come today it could be any parent but it's just like it is breaking my heart. On the shadow attributes, it says pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles. That's exactly it. Like, it's one thing to never believe. I've never believed in Santa. I never believed in celebrating myself on my birthday. I never believed in uh, love at first sight. But it's different to believe it and then slowly that light dwindle and that like innocence is stolen from a child where they're not going to get the result that they're hoping for and the miracle they're believing in so like that's when that adulthood depression like seeps in and it says believing that energy and action are not required for growth but that's not uh what really stuck out at me but all right we have prostitute 
And it says, that's why I was like, oh, you was a fast little kid. Uh, it says, accentuates the challenge of surviving without negotiating the power of your spirit. And the shadow attribute says, places material considerations and security above self-empowerment. So it's kind of like you had you did what you had to do to pay your rent. I'm not mad at you. I used to dance at the club right across from my school. I said, dance, not fuck. Don't get it confused. Had to set the record straight because bitches love to assume. Like, you had to do what you had to do. I'm not mad at you. Mm. <laughs> I seen this movie with Catherine Zeta Jones and it was called Queen Cocaine or Grandma Cocaine, something like that. Cocaine Godmother, something like that. And this girl is like eight years old and her mom out here trying to pimp her out to sleep with like older men. And when she comes back, she didn't even get paid for the deed. And the mom was like, you fucking idiot. I told you, you, you get paid first. And it's just like, what kind of mom are you to even be putting your kid in this position? Like, oh my goodness. It breaks my heart. So yeah, I feel like <sighs> so many things. Because <laughs> I did not expect this reading to be this deep. If you watching and you listening and you're like, my heart. Feel free to pause the video and come back at a later time and not at all. Feel free to come back not at all, okay? <laughs> but others of you who are listening to this and you're like, <sighs> That was me. Memory unlocked. I was this innocent, pure kid. Because we also have child divine, okay? Child magical, child divine. You were just like, it says innocence, purity, and redemption suggest a special connection with the divine. I feel like at an early age, because you know when we're kids, when we're young, that's when we could see angels. That's when we could talk to our spirit guides. That's when we're most connected to the fucking universe, you know, the greater, higher calling power because our belief isn't tainted that it's possible that this magic is out there, you know? That's like me as a kid, I used to talk to inanimate objects and be like, oh, I'm sorry, hanger, that I don't use you as much as these other hangers. Or like, maybe you talk to your stuffed animals, like, you get to sleep with me today and tomorrow we're going to have to swap you out because I have to be fair to everybody. Like, you're very, you know, it was so pure. And then you had to do these things, like, to survive, you know? I'm not pitying you. You are so fucking strong. Why would I pity you? Um, it says right here, challenges of surviving without negotiating the power of your spirit. So you're doing this stuff, but you're like, <sighs> I might be a victim, but I'm not going to let. Because right here with the victim card, it says prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. So that's you. You're not pitying other people. You're like, this is our life circumstance. And we could twiddle our thumbs and sit under this bridge and hope that someone will come and save us or we could do what's necessary to save ourselves. And you did what you had to do. The shadow attribute on the child divine card says an inability to defend oneself against negative forces. And I feel like as a, as a point, that was you. You were that kid and you couldn't, you know, defend yourself accordingly. But then you were like, let me grow up. The victim card, the shadow attribute says, playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity. I was talking about pity. Inability to maintain personal boundaries. Yeah, I feel like that wasn't you. You weren't like, don't you know my mom left me? Could I get this carton of milk for free? Or you're the one crying and you're like, I need extra time on my test because my mom just left. Like, you're not milking these excuses. You didn't want people to victimize you. You didn't want their pity. You didn't want that to be the way that, like, things get paid or the way you get favors or something like that. You were like, no, you guys aren't even going to know this happened to me. This could could have been your past and nobody knows this story. And it's not because you're ashamed to tell it. It's because you're not going to let this control you. You're not going to let this be the narrative where I'm this victim and this thing happened to me and blah, blah, blah. Because you have so much strength. You have so much strength of spirit. You probably... It's giving me the impression where... You're someone who prays a lot and then like somebody close to you passes away and you're like, um, oh, that could be a story for somebody and they pass away and then you're like, oh, clearly there's no God. But it's honestly giving me the impression of Pose and some of the girls had to work on the docks to get money and they're like, it's giving the energy where you had to be a prostitute, had to be a stripper, had to do these certain things and you were like somebody gotta live this life of course i'm not growing up like oh, one day i'm gonna shake my ass at the club but you're like i'm gonna do what i gotta do to not stay stuck like 
never never you were never a victim mentality type of person you were just more like oh no one's coming to the rescue <sighs> let me bulk up and save myself It's giving water sign energy, Pisces, Cancer, Cancer, Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. Capricorn is popping out at me. Because Capricorn are going to do what they do for it. They got to do what they got to do for the bag. All right. What was next? Problems problems that are standing in the way i don't know if i'm gonna post this we just seen 11 11 on the recording time why wouldn't i post this because it just seems intense like i'm happy that you feel safe in my energy which is why i'm able to pick up on your energy in the collective and i know a lot of people try to focus on the violence of the crime or the bad or the villain and don't really focus on the strength of the person that has to go through the situation or like the impact living a life like this has like the impression like you know so i'm glad that the story is coming through i'm not trying to deny that or deny your experience like this is the reality of life people are freaking being sold in sex slavery and people are being like fucking selling people is like the top tier black market underground shenanigans like this is a real reality and i'm not trying to deny that it just hmm, i just wasn't expecting things to go this way but that's why you gotta kill your expectations so i guess i gotta post it <laughs> Um, what got in the way? All right, Taurus energy is now popping out. Yes, yeah, very much like spiritually, spiritual person, very much a spiritual person. Oh, and I missed the card. Wow. What did you want to be when you grow up? You just wanted family. You just wanted to have a happy family. Didn't I say your mom left? It didn't have to be your mom. It could have been any parent. Getting the energy you live with your like grandparents or you just had a super inattentive. <laughs> okay. Your childhood was super like not easy and to tap into it is like hard for me because then I imagine if this was my life I imagine those feelings and the things and the stuff and it's just like it's a lot but I'm a push through for you because all stories deserve to be told truth prevails so in life you are going to have a problem with I see like clean water or hot water, like having to boil water to take a shower or, you know, things like that. Also with water or clean water, something of the sorts, I feel as though relationships, letting people in your bubble is going to be something that's difficult because you don't know if you can trust people for real. Like if they're filling you up with things you want to hear or genuinely like filling you up with... Uh, love and support and such you have a problem with spirituality and like following the traditional route or following a sense of guidance because again you didn't have like hands-on parents so for someone else to step in and be like oh you should do this 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 you're just kind of like oh you know my mama like you're not my daddy and if they didn't care enough to pay attention to me why like just leave me alone i feel like some teachers could have tried to guide you or someone tried to give you like you know overall like surrogate mother type of energy and you were just kind of like not having that at all i feel like you also have a problem not i have a problem but you had trouble with spirituality or with god or with the bigger picture because you've had such a hard life so you're like if there is this god then where are they then why aren't they saving me why aren't they helping me like this makes no sense to me if god really loved me they wouldn't have taken away this person they wouldn't have put me in these situations in these positions 
And I feel like you'll also have a tr prob problem with like abandonment, not only within yourself, like it happening to you, like being an abandoned by a parent, being abandoned by a loved one or what you perceive to be abandoned, but also abandoning people because you, you're kind of like, well, it was done to me so I could do it to them. If, um, you know, if they didn't care enough to stay, then I don't also have to extend that same courtesy to other people. It's a lot of family wounds. Or if things don't fit the way you want things to go, you are quick to withdraw from the situation. Instead of, and I'm not judging you, instead of fixing and talking and communicating, you're like, ah, oh, that's more difficult. It's easier to just dip. It's easier to just start somewhere else, fix it somewhere else. Like, I got two visions. If you work somewhere, say you're at a club and you're like, oh, I need 60% of my tips or I need this or that. And they're like, oh, I'm not going to do that because that you're like, oh. so I'm telling you this is something I need and I'm expressing myself to you and you're telling me no, your answer is no. Okay, watch this. And you pack up all your shit and you never go back. You're like, well, this is how I respond to that no. And it's kind of like your way or the highway of energy, but it's also kind of like these are my boundaries and you're going to respect them or you're not. I feel like you didn't have very much, you know, guidance, parental guidance of like what's right, what's wrong. So you were just kind of like, I have to figure it out on my own. So if I get in a situation I shouldn't have been in, I'm going to just whoop, get out of the situation. There goes the door. All right. Any last bit of information that comes out? What was the point of this video? Like... <laughs> I wasn't trying to stir up no shenanigans for nobody, but it wanted to come out. So here we are. The card that just came out. Okay, first we have the maiden. It says innocence. We've been talking about that this whole time. Love and past, which is all the energy that we've been talking about. Your innocence from the past was stolen. And because of that, it's hard for you to love like... I don't know why this turned into a musical. <laughs> and then we have Amaterasu, which is the Japanese goddess of light. It says we are all sacred mirrors reflecting back the same light. So what's the energy? Why is my nose so itchy all of a sudden? Stop doing cocaine for some of you. Oh my gosh. That was very out there. And again, I'm not judging you. When I was a kid, I used to tell my mom I wanted to try cocaine. And she would be like, okay. And we were also talking about cocaine godmother. See, something's up. Something's up. Something's up. And um, she, she would be like, okay. She was low-key supportive of the situation. She was just like, whatever. Because um, I would see it in movies. And I would be like, okay. They got this stuff. They take a bump. Then they hype and light. I was like, who wouldn't want that vibe? But then when I grew up, my mom told me that people be mixing the shit with shit that shouldn't, it shouldn't be mixed with. And I was like, oh, no. And I honestly grew up to be like a low-key paranoid kid. So, like, I, I couldn't. I still can't to this day. I feel like if I would try any, like, Molly... This is the part where I start listing drugs, but like clearly I don't I don't know any. I was gonna say RDT. There's some three letter word one I can't think of it. Acid, like none of that. The thing is, I'm too paranoid. So once my heart starts elevating and I start sweating and the things start, I'm gonna be like, I'm dying. Is this the drugs? Did it hit? Oh my god! I need some water. It's too much. <laughs> don't do drugs. They're lame. Papa Molly, you dying. Like, Papa Molly, you sweating, you deceased, you can't breathe no more, you hope the ambulance gets to you in time. Who knows if it really will? Don't do it. It's also making me think of this song called by Demi Lovato called Dead Friends because a little Demi Lovato got sober and she'd be talking about how she had all these vices and how she did all of these things, all right? And how is it that she's alive but her friends who was doing the same things, they are not, okay? Rest in peace, Mac Miller. Rest in peace. Angus Cloud, rest in peace, Corey Monteith. Like, I don't, rest in peace, Brittany Murphy. Oh my God, this kind of looks like Brittany Murphy. 
low-key. The point of the story is you have a light about you. And even though you feel like life kind of stole your childhood and you have an hope at the window that, you know, someone c will come back. When you think about that little kid, you're like, damn, boo dickhead. You was hella salty. You really thought they was going to come back. You spent your summers at home because you thought maybe somebody will knock on the door and be ready to hang out with you and be like, oh my God, I'm back. I hear I arrived. And you sat on the sidelines and watched other people have fun because you were trying to live a life where you know you was gonna be this one big happy family but then when you realize no one came to save you when you realized you was on your knees praying and nobody was hearing your calls that something had to change and something had to be different so you walk away from things that are unsettling and you walk away from things where you feel like you are not in control and that happens and that's the truth but the thing is your light is not gone your light has not dispersed when you're in that oop 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 i heard when you're in that sapphire room or when you're in that vip room something like that and it's dark and you zoned out and you just aloof and it doesn't have to be that situation obviously we're talking into stripper energy because the prostitute card came out but it doesn't have to be just that whatever it had to do that you had to do to survive you had to do what you had to do to you know maybe you had to stick with that um you have to stick in that poor relationship a little bit longer because if you were to get out of it, where are you going to sleep? Where are you going to eat? You know, maybe you have to do things a little bit longer for the sake of survival. And you had to do things longer than you thought you would need it. And it was a crutch that you had to lean on for a little bit longer. You wanted to be able to stand up on your own two feet a little bit longer. And I get it. And you're kind of scared to have a family or be in those positions because you saw how messy family was and you were like, why would I want to repeat that? Why would I want to do that again? But the thing is that innocence is still there within you. That love is still completely a capable, you know, it's like still a capability of yours. Your light, that's still something within you. So like, even though it's been dark and even though you kind of forgot how to turn it on or where it would even be or how you could even find it, it is down there. That light is still available. And you know, so when you look at other people and you're like, wow, they're so light or they're so innocent or they're so happy or they are still, you know, you can choose to focus on other things. Like, granted, yeah, I feel like for most of you, you're not that victim anymore. You're not in that mentality where this has happened to me and this was the hand I was dealt and blah 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 you kind of even don't even address it or you just like you're like it is what it is everyone gets a hand and you know at least I have this at least you know you still know what to be grateful for but it's kind of like <sighs> love still exists and like you can still bloom into something else like now I feel like you have clean water. Now I feel like you have the things necessary that can help you grow. So if you wanted to plant roots, if you wanted to stick around a little longer, if you wanted to... <sighs> like someone, let someone in. Like there's so many things. If you wanted to go to church or read the Bible or... I don't know, start yoga or get into tarot to, you know, find some discernment. Talk to your spirit guides, like meditate. Like, I don't know what it is, but now's the time. It says accentuates the challenge of surviving. But... You don't have to survive anymore. You can thrive now. Okay, pile one. This is what I have for you. Um, for some of you, I just heard you'll have a family of your own and you'll have a kid. And when you look at that kid, you'll want to give them the light and the world and the everything. And their innocence will kind of like revive something in you when they want something or they call out like mom mom maybe you were met with silence and your mom never came for you but you'll be able to run to your the room and you know be there like what's wrong baby what can I help you with what happened I had a bad dream hold me and when they want to be held someone's actually there and you'll actually see yourself as your child hugging yourself and being that savior and protector you didn't have before and for us uh, some of you who don't want children and you're like uh that's a cute little story, but we're never going to do that. I completely understand because I don't want kids either. Just sit and have a meditative moment where you imagine your little inner child wanting something and you just hugging them so tight and you're like, oh, I can't believe you went through that and you're still here and you're still standing. You're so strong and you're so brave and I love you so much. But now 
you can rest. Now I got us. Now I will carry us moving forward. You just be here with me. And you just remind me that love exists, okay? Um, yeah. I see a little you in the corner hugging their knees, you know, crying. Because this looks like, you know, teardrops that turn into raindrops, you know, like puddles. And it's like... Let me shine my light. I see someone there. Let me rescue them. Let me take them to the safety. You've been waiting for a knight in shining armor. This is you. That's like in movies when you see when people like have a time portal and they go in the portal and they go back in time. Harry Potter, all right? Harry Potter swore his dad was going to save him. I swear, my dad, I seen him. He's there. He's coming with the light. And you bring the light and you shine the light on you so that you're not the victim. Because if life stole your innocence, if life stole your attempt at love, you would still be a victim. You would be a victim to your past. But now you're strong enough to revisit that past and see what it was and know you deserve better. So this is what I have for you, Pile One. Thank you so much for watching. I think you deserve everything and more okay we all deserve amazingness but based on your life life owes you so you show up and you take it for all it's worth okay so this is what i have for you thank you so much for watching if you like the vibe subscribe to the tribe comment down below if it resonated for you and i will see you next time bye hello pile two so today we are tapping into a message for your inner child we're gonna tap into what you want to see when you're a kid problems that will arise in life and like advice or tidbits or whatever wants to come out in the end so <sighs> pile two pile one was a little way more intense than i thought this reading was going to be i don't really know what the purpose of this reading is but hopefully you find something that resonates with you and if you do comment down below and let me know so uh, who did Pile 2 want it to be? Who did Pile 2 want to be when they grew up? Pile 2. Okay. Too many cards. Who did Pile 2 want to be when they grew up? Too many cards. Okay, and bottom of the deck. <laughs> Okay, so what people didn't really know about you is that you wanted to get into gossip. All right. It says, awakens considerations for the feeling of others honoring trust, okay? And the shadow attribute says, thrives on the power of passing on private or secret information, betraying confidences. You could have wanted to be like paparazzi. You wanted to be the nose nose in the know. You wanted to have the tea. You kind of wanted to be the people on entertainment tonight and be like, I heard that so-and-so is dating this, this, this person. You thought it was like... A sense of power to have all of this information for some of you you guys could have wanted to be a counselor and it's still kind of like getting the gossip it's just with you know or wanted to be a teacher and get like the gossip within the teacher's lounge just like oh well i heard they're dating this person and this person and that person it could have not even been something big you could have just wanted to be the like the person who knows everything when you see like movies based in high school and they're like oh i don't know but go ask scarlet they know everything or it's like oh their hair is so big because they are hiding secrets you know you like to be in the know and if it wasn't like celebrity gossip you could have been wanting to be a newscaster or a journalist or you know you're on the scene with me and we've just reported live you can see behind me that the building is still burning and we think it's arson and blah 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 you know you wanted to know the tea and then we have companion as well as engineer some of you could have wanted to be an engineer i mean when you're a kid you didn't know that was the job title but you're like oh i want to design video games i want to create this it says talent for designing resolutions to common dilemmas so you could have just been a kid who likes to solve problems and it was easy for you to see something and formulate a solution which is an amazing gift to have not even as a kid but as a uh, growing up adult person you know like in life it's a good skill to have because some people just see a problem and only see the problem and wallow in the problem and can't see anything else but you see a problem and you see how to fix it that's very beneficial some of you could have even wanted to be a food critic 
not only to get free meals, but again, you wanted you wanted to set the tone of what's what, what's popular, what's not, a fashion this or some type of, you know, oh, I saw this person wearing this and that was actually completely out of style. If it were up to me, it would be this, 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 like, you know, or you could have wanted to be a judge, like a judge on Project Runway, the next Simon Cowell or something. You wanted to tell people what, what it is. Um, it says ability to give creative energy a practical expression. Yeah, and look at this big old dome, all right? You got a lot of ideas storming in there. Very, like, inquisitive, creative, imaginative type of kid. And then we have companion, and it says loyalty, tenacity, and selfishness. And honestly, when I look at this card, it reminds me of Pocahontas and Belle. And those are, like, the two smartest. Throw Mulan on there. Those were, like, the smartest um, Disney princesses, I guess you could say, we have. Um, or had at the time because you know they're pretty creative these days or whatever you could say um yeah so I feel like growing up you just wanted to be a good friend you could have grown up wanting to be like a personal assistant uh nurse you wanted to be someone who like a right hand man like oh I need you I'm there I got the idea I got the solution like I can just I can fix it for you A fashion editor you could have watched living single and you were like oh Khadijah Queen Latifah you were like I could do that I want to be that a lot of journalism energy popping up because she ran she had a magazine okay let's keep going pile two thank you pale two <laughs> no shade to pile one but I did not expect to jump into that energy that quickly right and it was more like a like um, um mm, 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 energy but better for me that it, it came so I could get it out the way and then I could focus on the up. And it's nothing wrong with the mm. I'm very mm. Okay, Scorpio rising over here. I know all about the mm. But I wasn't in the mood for the mm. Okay. I have author, okay? Why didn't I even think of that? It says you have a book inside of you that wishes to be expressed. Make the time to write it. Yes, I was definitely pick up and pick up and that was definitely the energy I was picking up on because Belle, she likes to read books. You out here talking about an author. I kept seeing writing articles in journalism. You take a hop and skip from journalism, you got author, all right? Some of you could even be trying to be an illustrator, write, um, you know, a kid's book because they have a lot of illustrations. So it's kind of like, but yes, a writer, an author. You could even be trying to write a book, like a tell-all, you know, a tell-all on your life, a tell-all on someone else's life. Maybe you was the mistress of the situation and you were like, oh, y'all thought y'all know, but here is the tea from my extensive, uh, my point of view, my perspective. That's what I was trying to say. I think I said expressive. I don't know. Okay, so for pile two, what gets in the way? What gets in the way no 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 that card just came out Taurus energy was trying to pop out but I had to put it back because it wasn't shuffled I think that card just came out pile one I'm thinking of signs that's why I'm a little distracted oh Libra energy is popping up Aquarius Gemini Sagittarius Scorpio Cancer Okay, a lot of major arcana so these aren't like little problems. These are like major problems. Yes, major problems. All right, we have the Empress in the world, which is Libra Taurus energy. I mentioned Libra. I said Taurus is trying to pop out so it's made a statement for real and then we have the magician and the seven of swords okay so what gets in the way of the problem some of you end up becoming moms um 
it doesn't necessarily have to be at a young age, like a teen mom, but I see you becoming a mother and then it kind of distracts you from your goal. Didn't I mention a children's book? Maybe you had to have a kid to put you in the perspective of writing a children's book. So there were certain things that had to come before life. Like, you know, if you're meant to do the thing, you're going to do the thing. Nothing can stand in the way of you doing the thing. But maybe just the execution is a little later in life than you thought it would be. For some of you, being able to be a friend to your kid and also find kids are always a bundle of problems. So that's just solutions waiting to, you know, problems waiting to be solved. So for some of you, motherhood definitely did the trick as far as your talents and capabilities. You get to gossip with the PTA moms and, you know, that works for you. So basically your problem in life is that other things can like took your attention off of what you thought you wanted. You became a mom, you traveled the world, you wanted to gain more confidence in your skills before putting them out there. And some of you did have like imposter syndrome or you did feel as though you weren't validated in this career field or you had a lot of like people trying to steal your shine in this avenue so it was kind of hard to keep the faith that you were meant to do this thing in life I feel like many of you as much as you wanted to be a friend a companion like you know someone's right hand man I feel like you were kind of isolated and you didn't have a lot of friends some of you still don't have a lot of friends or your partner is like your only best friend. <laughs> like you're friends with your partner's friends, but you don't necessarily have friends. Or it could just be you and your partner and like who needs friends? You two versus the world. They are your best friend type of energy. I feel like self-love, yeah, valid inner validation was is something you've struggled with. Feeling fulfilled in life. Ooh, I heard some of you cannot have friends because you out here gossiping. Like, exactly what you wanted to do. Knowing all the tea. You could have betrayed someone's trust. Because on the shadow side of companion, it says betrayal by misusing confidences. Loss of personal personal identity. So it might have taken you a while to figure out who you are. I feel like you are taller than most people. That could be something you felt awkward about. Or something that took you longer to love about yourself. Or it's something about legs. You could be like super short or super tall. You can make your own clothes or, oh, see, didn't I mention Project Runway? Man, you can make your own clothes or have like an old fashioned look. You could even wear hijabs. There was something aesthetically that set you apart from others and it was obvious to notice. You could have had really big hair and everyone's hair was straight. You had your hair covered. Everyone's hair was out. You wore... I just seen a yarmulke and also I'm sorry I don't know the name but it kind of looks like a African little style hat something culturally or you know some people have like the red dot or some people have like certain tattoos or certain like I heard like tribal aesthetic, like there's something or, you know, like the, the gauges, but they're not gauges. Gauges is like aesthetic. This is like a cultural thing that like stretches out the ears or there's something that like elongates the neck. There's something culturally that made it obvious that you stand out from others. It could have even been the food you packed and brought to lunch. Oh, that I'm getting visions of you, you having beautiful textured hair as a kid. And maybe it was big and maybe it was frizzy and maybe it was curly and people, little, mm, little straight haired brats are whispering about you. 
killing the vibe. That's why you wanted to be the gossiper. That's why you wanted to house all the secrets so that you could have some type power, some type respect from people. Like, I wouldn't talk about me, Stacy. When I know you got back shots behind the bleachers last fall. Like... <laughs> Oh, hilarious. Hilarious. Let's keep going. Let's keep going because I only want this to be like 20 minutes long and we know. We know I could chat. Too many cards. I do see you writing the book later in life. That is crazy that this just came out i'm gonna show you in a second um but if we look at this lady all right look at this lady she giving me 35 at the youngest okay <laughs> um all right so we have 21 with rest stop recharge self-care and we have perpetua the saint of authenticity i am my uncle authentic self in all circumstances and we have pages and I mentioned journalism writing author all right you're definitely a writer you're definitely someone who keeps a journal um I am my authentic self in all circumstances I find I find it funny that I said a problem you would have in life was like self-love was inner validation so the fact that you get to a point in life where you feel authentic where you feel fulfilled and being exactly who you are and you feel like you have enough confidence to own your skills and your talents and like put it out there is so fucking amazing it's completely full cycle is the point of life to grow to have these things and to you know grow out of the things that don't fit us anymore and grow and develop into like a flower that could bloom so like kudos to you with uh stop charge self-care rest i feel like that was definitely the energy you're you were in between what you wanted your dreams and where you presently are or where you were up until this point you know you've been resting you've been recharging you've been caring for yourself so that you could develop a sense of self-worth self-love self-esteem you've been working on inner validation you know you haven't been too much you haven't maybe put yourself out there you haven't really been writing pages or writing your story or you know you know you're like i sit in front of the computer and i don't do anything maybe you have writer's block you know maybe you haven't been making a lot of designs. Maybe you haven't been inspired to create and express yourself in a while. Maybe you have a problem and you don't see the solution. You don't know how to resolve the situation. And it's kind of like, put that all out of your mind. Right now, you are in a period of rest, all right? There is supposed to be, or maybe you haven't let yourself rest because you're stressing about these things. One, worry doesn't change the outcome. Two, you are supposed to be in a period of rest. You are supposed to be in a period of stop. Collaborate and listen. Ice is back with a brand new edition. No, but for real, stop. Collaborate. Me and you are collaborating because I'm putting new ideas in your head. So stop, collaborate, and listen to what I'm telling you. You were not supposed to go anywhere. If you run in and you figure you wondering why you haven't been moving, you are in quicksand. The more you run, the more you struggle, the harder it is. Ooh, 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 it's making me think of Harry Potter. All right. And Harry Potter, when they are in those vines back 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 in chamber of secrets was it chamber of secrets or was it sorcerer's stone <gasps> sorcerer's stone all right when it was those vines and they out here struggling and hermione's like just chill the fuck out just sit still and you're gonna be able to get to the next level and that's you you kind of haven't been able to sit still so sit okay either you sit voluntarily or the universe will sit you down, all right? It's time for you to recharge, pause, reflect, make sure your self-love is high, your self-confidence is up there. Imposter syndrome should definitely be dead and gone. Be in a position where you're like, I feel like my authentic self. If you don't feel authentic, if you can't go outside and feel like you're not wearing no mask, you still have work to do. And that's why you're in this stop phase. You, This is why you're recharging. This is why you're getting your juices and your batteries up and together so that when you are in the position where you have something to say, something to write down, it's all full forces ahead, all right? So don't look at life like, oh my God, life has fucking pushed me from my goal i was on this path and life swooped me around over here right everything that's happened to you in life is meant to use your experience to tell your story use your experience to put yourself in a perspective you haven't seen before like it's making me think when you work at a clothing store all right and you're a cut i mean when you go to a store 
You just go and you try on clothes and you leave and that's it. But when you work at that store, you realize you're the person who has to clean up the clothes. You're the person who has to fold the stuff and make it neat on the shelves and put the shoes back where they go and sweep the store before the night's over to have it reset for the next person. So when you were just a person in life, you know just minding your business, you had one perspective in life. You were the person who just went to the store and it was already clean. But now having a kid, now being a parent, now being the person who, you know, chases fulfillment, has to live an authentic life, who has the confidence to do things, you're not now on the other side. Now you're in the inside. Now you know the secrets of the stuff. Now you know the sales before they go out. Now you have the inside scoop, you know? So... Now you have this inside scoop of how to be a parent or this inside scoop on how to be a, par a healthy partner or whatever it is. The inside scoop on how to live a high vibrational life. Now that is something you could pour into your book. Now is that now is that something now that's something you could share with other people. You wanted to gossip. You wanted to have the inside scoop and the secrets and the stuff. You have that. Utilize that to, you know, interact with other people. But you're definitely a writer. If you journal, if you write in your diary, if you have ideas and you scribble them down, you are a writer, you are an author, you have a book inside you that wants to be told. And even if you don't have those pages forming it, matted in just the right way and you don't have the execution and you don't want to know what your cover art should be, hit me up. We could brainstorm. But even though you don't have all of these other boxes checked, does not take away from your capabilities of being a writer, of being a journalist, of being someone who shares the ideas and their energy and their, you know... And I feel like you can't solve your own problem right now because you're too close to it. You know, walk outside, hear someone else's problem, get a new perspective on it so that you can see things from a different way. Because this is something you've been doing since you were a kid. You've always been a writer. You've always written poetry. You've always, you know, had your research assignments. You've always found solutions. So just because you're older doesn't mean that's something that you don't have anymore. That's still an, a capability you have. That's still a skill that you have acquired. You just forgot how to use it, you know? So... And it also, this is something that came naturally to you. This is something that you would have an idea and you need to go find the paper and pen because you have to quickly write it down before it escapes your mind. Now that you are coming to your idea with the paper and pen, now that you are showing up in a different way, it's kind of like you're trying to force the thought. That could be part of why you have a writer's block because now you're trying to approach it like, I'm ready, tell me what you got. Instead of letting things flow and you being ready to, you know, to put put the information down. So with rest, with stop, with self-care, it's kind of like focus on something else. You can get your, you know, you could take the magnifying glass off of your attention off of this. Oh, that's funny because this kind of looks like a magnifying glass now that I say it. So you can, you know, get it off the hot spot and you can put something else in focus so that it can just naturally accumulate the idea. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I just heard? Baby bottle pop, baby bottle pop. Take a bite, look at it, and shake it. Then dip it again, it's the baby bottle pop. Baby bottle pop. That just confirms for me that somebody out there got a kid. Somebody out there got a kid. Felt like that kid put distance between their dreams and what they really wanted. But then they were like, mm, motherhood could be something. And then you realize it was fucking great to have a kid was a responsibility but it's okay you said you'll try and then it has been 10 years of life and you're like oh fuck I didn't realize I put all my dreams into his life but it's okay if I stop and realize that I still have a chance this was meant to be do 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 exactly what happened to me it was to succeed in a different way of life than I was seen but this is what i have for you pile two thank you so much for watching if you like the vibe subscribe to the tribe otherwise i'll see you next time bye hello pile three so today we are tapping into a message for your childhood self or wait a message for your inner child okay we're gonna tap in what you wanted to be as a kid you are very you're very hyper um did you have adhd i feel like i can't sit sit still i feel like they're talking to me and i'm like and then they're like, did you hear? And you were like, I was listening. But then when I started shaking my head and the way my hair was bouncing on my face, it felt so good. And then I got a breeze in my ear. So like, now I'm distracted. Like, <laughs> Or they were like, were you listening? And you were like, I was listening. But then the way I started shaking my foot, I started thinking about um, roller skating and then skateboarding. And now I'm waiting for you to be done because I really got the urge to run over there. Like... <laughs>
You were a fun kid. You were so free. When you felt something, you just acted on it and you just did it. And you were like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be patient and polite by listening, but like, I'm not listening. I really am distracted and want to be over here. Or when you hear a song and you like it and you're like, I'm dancing, I'm having a good time. And you're like, family's laughing at you or something and you don't even care. And they're just like, what are you doing? And you're like, this feels so good. When's the last time you jumped? When's the last time you hopped on one leg? Ooh, ooh, like... <laughs> You're just so fun and free. It gives me fire sign energy. This Sagittarius, Leo, and Aries. Just so, like, active. And I'm a do. And yeah, look. Watch watch me from right here and back. I'm so fast. Ooh, watch me do this. Ooh, I'm so strong. Like, <laughs> that's the energy that's coming. That's the energy coming out. Okay, what's in pile three? Oh, wait. You give me the impression that like when you just eat, you try to eat really fast so you can go back in the pool, but you know that your mom is going to make you sit and wait anyway. So you literally scarfed it down for nothing. So you're like, Capri Sun, okay, I'm ready to go. And your mom's like, no, 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 sit down. And you're sitting like, mom, I've been here forever. Let me go back. And she's like, it's literally been three minutes. Like, stop that. Even then, you're like drinking and you're trying to drink fast and then it goes down the wrong pipe and you're like, <laughs> I'm choking, I'm dying, like I feel like I'm drowning. And your mom's like, see? And you want to go back in the pool to drown for real. Stop that shit. Wait. Uh, or you're the kid who comes out the pool and you're like, oh, I need something from the kitchen. And then you're like looking around and you run into the kitchen to grab some snack or something. And your mom's like, get out the house, you're dripping everywhere. And you're like, no, it's real quick. And you go back in the pool and then you get up and you get out five minutes later and you're dripping around again. And you're like, I had to use the bathroom. And your mom's like, oh my God, it's always something. It's always something with you, kid. If it's not a fucking dance practice, karate practice, soccer practice, this practice, you got this after school activity, this thing here, this there, sleep over here, friend house there uh, you you just be active you just be doing what did you want to be mm -hmm, when you grew up that is exactly for some of you you were such a handful that you became an only child and your parents got you a pet and they were like the pet is as best we could do for you we got child nature um so i feel like when it comes to your child energy as a kid you were a super child kids should be active and playful and jumping and doing and stuff and stiff especially when they're in an environment where parents aren't trying to shush them down. Like there's a lot of kids where they're have the same energy as you do, which is trying to move, trying to jump, trying to do. And their parents are like, can you sit down? Can you sit still? You've run around enough. You're doing so much. You're too, you know, okay. I don't want to look, I don't want to have to pay attention is really what it comes down to. Um, so do you, for you to have that energy where you're in an environment where people don't, abuse your spirit or emotionally abuse you to make you feel like you have to stop doing what is intrinsically you is so precious and safe and just like free spirit energy so with child nature honestly it makes me think of earth sign energies so besides fire signs aries leo sagittarius earth signs are capricorn taurus and virgo so i feel like you even though you were someone very hype and very this and very that when it came to a pet or when it came to like caring for other people if your parents eventually did get another sibling i feel like there's a gap between you and your sibling maybe like four or five years but I feel like you were always very gentle you're a hyper kid but when it came you recognize that this is like a living creature even as a kid very gentle um I don't know if you ever seen those videos where they say give a kid an egg and the kid will be like oh like nurturing of it I feel like that was that was you you're very much like oh this is my sibling like you know precious if it was a smaller age gap than five, again, I feel like very like emotionally aware of the life of someone else. So it's very like, oh, this is my brother, this is my sister. They're littler than me. So I'm being gentle. I'm being kind. Even with the pet, it was kind of like, oh, you know, safe, soft. But you were very much like, this is my little brother. This is my best friend. Went everywhere with you type of energy again i feel like you were someone who was always outside who was always willing to play you wanted to be a veterinarian when you were a kid some of you could have even grown up to want to be a pediatrician like it started out as a veterinarian it could have developed into being a pediatrician too many cards keep coming out who is pile three as a kid, what did Pile 3 want to be when they grew up? All right. We have hero, heroine, heroine. 
Some of you might be dabbling towards addiction. Get help, seek help if necessary. Some of you wanted to create a rehab center, but it was those ones where you work at a farm where you have to take care of animals, like something outside of yourself. But Harry Hero says, passion for a journey of personal empowerment. So I feel like you could have wanted to be a life coach, um, a physical trainer, a counselor, someone who writes a self-help book. Uh, I heard something like, like emotional support, like you write a book about emotional support pets or you, I mean, with this picture of it being outdoors, I feel like this could be you again, being very active. You could be into rock climbing or base jumping or cliff diving or something of the sort. What's it, pile three? It says you are on the right path. Keep doing what you're doing because it's working. Okay, so some of you are already living the dream. Whatever you did want to be a, as a kid, you are now. You're a nurse. You are a veterinarian. You're a pediatrician. Um, you're an environmental scientist. You're trying to save the trees. You could be a social activist, an environmental activist, something like that. You could just work at a PetSmart. <laughs> Something in relation to animals. You could work for PETA. Animals, nature, something something in that department. Okay, so what gets in your way in life? What's the problem? Too many cards. I feel like you're different from your neighborhood or like from the friends you grew up with the friends you grew up with everyone wanted to be a ninja you wanted to be a pirate everyone wanted to be a villain you wanted to be a hero like when they were being the joker you were being superman that's a different movie batman <laughs> when everyone wanted to be indoors playing video games you wanted to be outside running around riding your bike it's making me think of Stranger Things. When everyone was trying to worry about girls, you were inside trying to play Dungeons and Dragons. Like, when everyone was at the party, you were inside studying. And now that everyone works at the PetSmart, you are a veterinarian. Like, I feel like when everyone was distracted for their studies, you definitely stayed on, like, the straight and narrow. And the, or that was your plan as a kid. We'll see what problems came in the way. But as a kid, you were like, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to do this. I know I have to be in school for eight years. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a veterinarian. When I found out you had to go to school for eight years to be a veterinarian and pedi a pediatrician and all that, I was like, that's good. Let me pick a different category of life because who doing all of that? But you were ready. You were like, okay, college, mm -hmm, I get it. Junior year is the focus. We're with it. I feel like you're very good at giving a lot of Virgo energy. You're very good at your like routines and checking your boxes and keeping your schedules. So even though you were rowdy and distracted, you just had energy to kill, but you weren't like a bad kid. Maybe, maybe you had ADHD and OCD or ADHD and autism. So even though you were like, you were also like, okay. Okay, I have... I heard I have piano at 1 and I have soccer at 2.30, but that means between soccer and the next thing, I have 15 minutes of free time to have a dance party. Like, you are very much, I understand why it's got to be what it's got to be. Like, you didn't want to wait to get into the pool after you ate, but you understand why it had to be what it had to be. The problems. We got two of swords, king of swords, and the queen of cups. All right, so what got in the way? You were overthinker. For some of you, you could really have OCD and you had fears that if you didn't do certain things like knock on the wall five times or count every, you know, 
sidewalk square on your way home, something could happen. There's something around indecision. Maybe that's why you are such on the narrow, straight and narrow, like goody two shoes had a good head on your shoulders. Cause yeah, that is your character, but also you felt if you weren't good, you would like burn in the flames of hell. Like something that intense. There was something that threatening and you were like, I'm not sure if this is real or not, but by the off chance that it's real, let me do this. So let me never disappoint my family. Never let, let me never sneak out of the house. Let me never try alcohol. Or, you know, some people are like, have you ever tried this? And you're like, no, because it's illegal. And they're laughing at you like everyone drinks at 16. Ah, ha, ha, ha. But you, it always had to make logical sense to you. If the logic didn't add up, like you would refuse to participate in it. It just, you could not do it. If you knew the rule was don't drink and drive and someone had a wine cooler, like someone had a few shots, even if they said they're okay, you're ready to call an Uber. You're like, no, we're not playing that. You're not supposed to drink and drive, period. I feel like what a problem for you in life is you're very all or nothing, black or white thinking. You don't have a lot of gray area. So you're like, no. But the rules say this. And your people are like, no, you could break it. No, that's a suggestion. No, it's that. And you're like, I don't believe you. It's laminated. Why would it be laminated if it wasn't true? Like, come on now. Look, look. For some of you, I feel like alcohol... Or, like, wine in particular could be a problem for you because you never, like, tried it. Because, again, a lot of people do try alcohol young. And by the time you actually tried it, I feel like you were already an adult. So you didn't know your tolerance as well as other people. You weren't as familiar as how of how you act when you're drunk because, again, it's something you've never experienced. So when you finally do it, it's hard for you to, like, find your tolerance or it's easy for you to go too hard because you're like this is fun now I'm old enough now you don't because the only reason for you not to do something was for the rule like oh I can't drink before 21 because I'm not old enough so now that you're 21 and you're old enough now you don't know when to hold to pull your reel it in you know because there's not a rule on how much you should drink and if anything people kind of like to get drunk that's the whole purpose so it's hard for you to find your moderation your sense of moderation and i feel like that happens for a lot of things not just drinking it could be with spending money buying jewelry buying outfits it's like you don't know your sense of moderation because it was just like no one taught you what's too much as long as you don't overspend good to go hmm <sighs> I think another problem for you in life will be when your plans don't aren't executed the way you thought they would in your mind. You had a, a certain vision on how things will play out. And when things go haywire, have a mind of its own, or like, you know, oh, we were going to go here, but class is canceled, so now we have to skip to the next step. And you're like, but no, because this is supposed to be the time that we're at this place and we're not at that place. So now I can't switch and do something else because then the whole rest of my schedule is off. That goes back to that black and white thinking. Also, I feel something hard for you in life is discerning between fear and your intuition. You don't know which voice is which because the voice of fear has been with you for so long. Uh... That I feel like even when you try to work on your OCD or try CBT or try certain things, you're like, it's not safe. I, I can't do it. You can do it and you will find a way that works for you. But in the beginning, it'll be extremely hard. For some of you, birth control will be a problem for you. I feel like it doesn't match your... 
I heard genetic condition. I don't know what that means, but like, you know, birth control has extra hormones and stuff like that. I feel like they just aren't like in equilibrium with whatever you already have going on. I'm not a health professional, just that's something to keep in mind. What else is coming through? Problems, problems. I feel like you'll have problems Not necessarily finding your voice completely. Oh, actually, maybe that's why you get along well with animals and with nature spirits is said on that card because you do have a problem with your voice. With communicating with other people, it's hard. I don't know if you're purposefully silent or like have selective mutism or you just don't like to talk to a lot of people or something of the sort but I feel there's something around your voice or the voices and the voices you hear could again go back to the voice of intuition the voice of fear but I feel like your mental could be a busy place I just saw 1255 on the recording time your mental could be a busy place. It could constantly t have a story about having a new beginning and starting over or just like switching up what you already got going on. Like, no, no, it's fine. Just stick to it. Just try it this way or just try it this way instead of just scrapping the whole thing itself. I don't know. Let's keep going. Um, okay. And any extra information or tidbits? For pile three. And don't ask me what the point of this video is. I honestly don't know. It just, it wanted to be read. So hopefully there's something in here that resonates with you. Lastly, we have number two, the Oak Guardian. Threshold answers, open mind. And we have the Black Madonna, our lady of the hermits. And hermit is Virgo energy, which we mentioned. It says, I transform pain and suffering into a greater capacity to love. Hmm. Oh, she has a baby in her arms and I was talking about birth control. So I feel like when I said the birth control doesn't match up with whatever genetics you got going on, I feel as though you got some strong genetics in the sense that the birth control not going to work. You're going to get a baby anyway. So some of you be mindful of that. And with I transform pain and suffering into a greater capacity of love, it makes me think that if you do have some type mental something, I'm not judging you. I have uh and even though you suffered and you struggled you kind of find tips and tricks to help yourself and you're going to give yourself as much love and freedom as you received and if not as much as you wish you received with answers and open mind I feel like in life you'll Remember, I feel like when life is struggled, wait, when life is hard and you're struggling, and again, it says pain and suffering, when you're going through those situations, keep an open mind. Remember that as a kid, you wanted to be a hero. You had a passion for personal empowerment. And the more you get to know yourself and the more you find answers about you, yourself, your condition, how you experience life and all of that just makes it easier for you to love yourself and to come from a place of love. This also makes me think some of you could not have like a mental something. Some of you could just be stubborn as fuck. Some of you could just have low self-esteem. Some of you could just be best friends with procrastination. You know, whatever the case may be. But don't just chalk this up to, oh, this is things that happen. Oh, my mind is a scary place. Oh, I don't know how to react to this. It's kind of like find enough love to seek out answers like, Google, I feel this. When this happens, how can I fix this? You know, look up CBT, which is correctional behavioral therapy, and try to find ways to suffer less. Because I feel like you are definitely a, a, like the a advocacy, advocate type of person. You know, you're speaking up for the trees. The people can't speak for themselves. You're speaking up for animals. The animals can't speak for themselves. And for some of you, you can't speak for yourself. So you definitely have to 
meet yourself with as much love as you can as much sense of empowerment like i feel like you have a high threshold for pain and for suffering but just because you can hold it in doesn't mean you should like open that door or let your voice speak out and say i need help i'm struggling i you know so something and you're very much someone that's again more for the logical approach so it's kind of like Don't you want to feel love, feel safe, feel seen? It depends what you're looking for. But like all of that happens when you share your story or you communicate your experience. So don't let fear convince you that you expressing your needs and your wants and your desires is going to wedge or like to is going to be a wedge between you and the other people. Your wants and your needs and your desires should never push people away. And if it does, they were never really there for you. So if people only enjoy your company when you're silent or only like you when you have nothing to say, that's just a means to control you. So also with the old guardian, it's making me think of you don't have to guard yourself anymore. You don't have to protect yourself from the fires of hell because you are already on the right path. You don't have to be forced into picking the right decision. I feel like this was something you would have done anyway. That's who you are, you're a good person. You don't have to be scared into being a good person for fear of consequence. Because fear of consequence is what keeps you in a mental sense of suffering, feeling like you can never choose the right thing, but following intuition, trusting yourself to have the right answer will help bring peace of mind so this is what i have for you pile three thank you so much for watching if it resonated with you be sure to comment down below and let me know remember you can trust yourself worrying does not change the outcome and you deserve to talk to yourself and interact with yourself from a place of love and light and if it's unsupportive here, then something needs to change, okay? And some of you are going to have a kid, a little kid exactly like you with the same type of, you know? And you're going to wish that they were vocal about the issues they were facing instead of trying to suffer in silence and battle this alone. And when you imagine the thought of your little kid feeling like they can't trust you enough or they're too scared to express that they've been through this pain and this struggle, it would break your heart. And you would want nothing more for them to transform their, you know, ideas and their brain space to be one that's more trusting. And you, as a parent, would try to do anything you can to make them feel safe in their skin and in their habitat of self. And that's the same exact type of love and attention you should be giving yourself. You should feel safe here. Supported. Loving. Good luck. Um, but this is what I have for you. If you like the vibe, subscribe to the tribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, Pile 4. So today we're tapping into a message for your inner child. First, we're going to tap into what you wanted to be when you were growing up, problems you would face in life, and then any extra advice or tidbits that want to surface. So let's get into things. Pile 4. What's the Pile 4 want to be as a kid? What do Pile 4 want to be when they were growing up? Okay, we have Priest. It says, facilitate spiritual commitment, serves as a channel of spiritual energy. You want it to be... Okay, I'm watching... I mean, not watching. In my head, I'm seeing like a deity and they had their right hand man and it was like a priestess a priestess or like a soothsayer or someone that they would seek for counsel to make sure the idea to go to roar or to plant these crops or whatever was a good idea i feel like that's the energy that's coming through for some of you you did want to legit be like a sermon or a pastor or a preacher or the pope or something of the sort and then we also have Martyr. It says, learning the transcendent nature 
of service to oneself or a cause. Yeah, some of you just heard um, Gabriel's horn early is what I heard. I don't even know if, Gab if hearing Gabriel's horn is a good thing or a bad thing. When I think of Gabriel's horn, I honestly think of all dogs go to heaven. And when he, like, when they burp, 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 all the little jail gates started opening, that's all I really remember. Um, but I, yeah, I feel early on in church, you were very moved. You joined the choir. It was easy for you to feel the spirit. Um you seen homeless people on the street and you're just moved. You're called to like, we need to take action. We need to do something about this. Very much for the people. Like, you very much wanted to help the community. You could even been driving around your neighborhood and you're like, oh, like, we gotta do better for our people. What did pile four want to be as a kid? We also have music. Didn't I say you were in the choir at church? Okay, yeah, music as in a spiritual sense. You could have heard a song that was just so like a spiritual experiment. I mean, exper experience. When I first had heard jazz music, it was like jazz music had such a transcendent experience for me. I felt it to my bones. I wanted to cry. Like it was very intense. I feel like you had an, an intense musical experience as a kid. It could have been in church and you first felt like spirit go through you or you sing a song and you could feel like God working through you or the universe delivering. The Holy Spirit was prevalent. I don't know. Something done happened. The first time you heard a cello, the first time you heard the bow against strings, it was such a, you know, like invigorating experience for you. A spiritual experience. You had this spiritual experience with music. The first time you heard a harp, the first time you heard, and it doesn't even have to be that. For me, it was that. The, for, the first time I really heard the beauty within music, it was just like... Some people could sing and it's bringing me to tears. Like, that's the experience you need. But for some of you, it could have been, like, the first time you heard a certain rapper, their their flow. Like, whatever it was, that instant, it was like you were hooked. You were just like, oh. You found the light, kind of. And music is so universal. You don't even have to... Like, I, don't, I listen to French music. I listen to African music. I listen to... Um, all types of stuff. I love me some British artists even now. And it's just like the connection. Like you don't have to. I listen to reggaeton. I don't know what the fuck they're saying. But it's a it's a vibe. You know what I mean? Music is an experience. It's a connection that everyone has all, all over the world. It's like the way we speak the same language. And that was very much you. You were like, I want to fuse music and church. Uh, oh, it's making me think of. <sighs> What's that movie? Mm -mm -mm -mm. So good to be home Where I know that I belong Inside this house alone With a family so strong And I'm here to worship Holding down my armory At the end of this song I'm never alone So good to be home Home sweet home What is that song? With Coco Jones. Oh my God. Are we serious? Not shine your light, but something, something. Now I got to look it up. Let it shine. That's what it's called. And he mixed his little rap career with his music for the church, you know? So it was like hand in hand. And I feel like with being a priest or being like a spiritual bridge or something like that, you didn't you didn't want to do it like everyone else did it. With you and music, it's kind of like you felt something in your soul that is not easily picked up on. So it's giving me Sister Act 2 when Whoopi Goldberg had to get the um, the kids together with Lauren Hill. And the first way that they hooked you in, how they got the attention was through music. And then they even used music to put on like a festival to get the community to raise money that goes back into the church. Like it was a whole, it was a whole experience. 
Now I'm thinking of. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee. By the way, what have you done for him lately? Do 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 do. Ooh, yeah. you know 21 pilots is a christian rock band like i feel like maybe you want to bring and we have barlow girls coming in okay barlow girls also a christian group they have a song um i like two songs by them actually this song and this song feel free to check them out um by my side so i looked out for what i know you're here and i'm never yeah so uh that's you i feel like you want to rebrand the spiritual world through music so problems that would stand in your way in life i just went down like a little music rabbit hole um Problems that would stand in the way for pile four in life. They cannot separate your part of me. Okay, let me stop because it will get stuck in my head. Uh, lovely messages for pile four problems in life. What is in the way? Problems in life. Okay. Okay, problems in life. Uh, we have the Knight of Wands, the Six of Cups, and the Ace of Swords. So, problems in life. I'm under the impression that you could be impulsive, especially when it comes to spending money. I feel like it'll be very easy for you to constantly spend out like Uber Eats, Grubhub, such and not cook so many home cooked meals. I don't even know if you know how to cook, but that'll be a problem in life. You're kind of impulsive. You're too quick to take action without thinking things through. That goes back to like that. Once you get the spirit in you, you ready to make moves, you are ready to take actions before planning it out, before thinking strategically about it. You're just like, we'll figure it out when we get there. Let's go, let's go take action. I feel as though you don't have a lot of patience And not only with the impulsive action to get things done, it's like when you're in the action, you're also quickly moving. I feel like you're shaving your legs and you're trying to go fast because you got other things to do. You have, your ideas are constantly active. So you're like, oh, I have to get through this. I have to do this before I forget this. And then I got to do this and this. And then you get all these cuts on your leg because you're shaving too fast. You know what I mean? Or um, if you do occasionally cook food, you don't have enough time for the pasta to boil. So it's like a little bit harder than it should be, but you're eating it anyway because you're just quick. You're on the move. You're, you know, you're trying to be an adventure. You're passionate a lot of, about a lot of things, but you don't want to half-ass things just because you're, you know, like, take a breath, see things through all the way. You don't have to execute everything exactly when you get it. You can sit and simmer and think about it and ruminate on it and, like, you know, really get a sense of that thing. I feel like you're very much a giver. Sometimes you give too much. Because that goes back to that like spiritual commitment. You see people and you want to help them and you're ready to like give the shirt off your back. Again, impulsive energy. You're like, oh, you're cold? Say less. And you're taking your coat off and you're like, here, take my shoes, take my socks, take my stuff. And then five minutes later, you're freezing cold and you didn't like, again, have the patience to think through how this would really play out. And you're just, all you knew is that you'll get it back to you. So you weren't worried about it. You're like, take it, you take it, you take it. I feel like you're very kind, you're very generous, you're very giving, but that kind of gets you in trouble in life. You're like, you're hungry. Oh, here, take the food off my plate. And then you have no food left. And it's like, it's amazing that you have such a big heart. And it's amazing that you want to give so much. And amazing that you want to bring other people joy and make sure that they feel this Holy Spirit that you felt and have this connection. And you know you want to share that amazing feeling. And you're passionate about feeling that and having other people experience that with you. And that's completely amazing. But not everyone can tap in like you can. 
it's a gift you have not everyone can experience that gift it's like you could be um I saw two visions. One, you're outside. You're playing basketball. You're bouncing the ball. Every shot you take, you're making it. Three-pointer, swish, in, side shot, boom, backboard, ah, all of it. Having so much fun. And you call your friends over and you're like, oh my God, you have to play basketball with me. It's so much fun. When the net goes in and you feel so proud and blah, 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 and your friends play with you and they're not making shots. It's not effortless for them. They're not having as much fun as you're having because you're running around and you know, the the deep breaths is making you feel exhilarating. The deep breaths is activating their asthma, okay? We have different skills and weaknesses and they're not, you know, so as much as you can lead them to water, as much as you can say, this feels good. Don't you feel the spirit when you dance? Don't you feel the spirit when you sing? Isn't this amazing? Not everyone has that same experience you're gonna have. So as much as you're trying to pour in this attention and make sure you know, they have it and it's good and they feel good and their self-esteem and their self-love and you know you matter and you know you're amazing and this, this. And as much as everyone deserves to feel that way and feel that light and have that attention, that is not your job specifically. So I feel like it's amazing that you want to work through music and you want to have something that people could play on. play Like someone could play this on their radio or play this in the morning and they could have a little dose of having a life coach because of the words you say the way the lyrics you know embody something within in them that makes them feel expressive that makes them feel good about themselves you know how you are when you listen to certain artists or listen to certain music and how it just fills you up you have I have a whole entire playlist that makes me feel good to be alive and playlists that make me feel sad and playlists that make me feel and playlists that make me cry you want to have that experience with music and I feel like you'll have struggles in life because at first you won't realize that music is your avenue you won't realize that music is the way to solve all of the things that you want to do for other people so instead you internalize their struggles by thinking it's something that you have to do you have to save them because you know the answer and it's kind of like the, the skills they were supposed to have they should have got that from their parents they should have got that from the same self-help books you read they should should have got that in the fourth grade if their school was funded enough to be able to um house these programs like anything you know whatever uh they should be able to afford their own coat you know and their life circumstances aren't your fault and what has happened to them is not your responsibility to fix your responsibility to life is to be the best you can be and because you have this need to serve other people which is amazing you just have to do it in a way that's healthy for you you can't let people trample all over your boundaries for the greater good because you know it'll be for someone's benefit so i feel like it's hard for you to think in strategy and that will be something that affects you through all of life until you you know have a sense of self where you're like wow i'm really much a, i'm very much a people pleaser but sometimes i give too much how can i reel back how can i do this instead how come how can instead of giving this I can give resources like oh I wish I could help you more but actually if you meet me tomorrow I can take you shopping if you do this you know you kind of have to get better at planning that would be for your benefit I'm also hearing um I said two visions but I think I only said one I can't remember what the other one is sorry ADHD but the second thing was um be careful with like music contracts or something like that. Like I can see you so impulsively excited to sign away at the opportunity to like get your music out there and stuff like that. But if you took another day, if you took a moment, if you asked like, can I get back to you in 48 hours? If you asked for an extension or something like that, if you gave yourself more time to think clearly, um, you could have really read the fine print is what I'm hearing. Some of you think you have to act right here in this moment or you're going to miss out on the shot or miss out or the opportunity or something like that but it's kind of like the right answers shouldn't feel rushed like if someone's like hurry up I need an answer right now uh no because if you're not giving me the opportunity to think about it and to really be sure of myself you're trying to pressure me to make a decision then I don't want it that's like when you're trying to shop and they're like oh hurry up it's in four other people's carts and you have three minutes before the sale ends and you're like oh my god I gotta take it it's now or never it's never now or never you always have time so it's kind of like if they're rushing you if this is the and it's making you feel like you have no other choice don't even participate in it that's not the type of energy you want around you 
And also, I feel like this knot is a lot of people's life. A lot of people have struggle and knots and like things and they can't see the way out. And I feel like you're very good at taking the time to focus and untangle the knot. What's funny is in your everyday life, you're very impulsive. But when it comes to interacting with other people, I feel like you have all the patience necessary to get them on board. So if it came, if this knot was your own life, you would just be like, let me take this knife and hack it through and I'll figure it out. But when it's other people's life, you're very much like trying to coax it out and trying to take time to really unravel it. And it's like you need to give that same patience to yourself. All right, pile four. Any extra tidbits, advice for pile four? Okay. We have number 17 with Celestial Cosmos Creation Spiral. And then we also have Kali the mother of the universe it says i release all that doesn't serve me it's time to be the truth of who i am hmm. okay more swords so with this one the sword was at like at rest and with this sword above the head it's almost like it just took action you see she just cut this head off So I feel like it's saying with your thoughts and actions, you've been very at rest. You haven't really acted on as much as you thought you would because you've been just sticking your hands in a bunch of pots. But instead of seeing one thing like full through. So with Celestial's Cosmos, Spiral Creation, I feel like you are very intuitive. You are very connected to a spiritual commitment or like a higher spiritual realm with that priest energy that came out from the beginning. Um... I feel like you definitely can make strides within the spiritual community through music, which again, Barlow Girls, 21 Pilots is really jumping out at me. I don't listen to a lot of uh, Rejoice by Steve Angelo and T.D. Jakes is a good one. I don't really listen. I'm not a churchy person. Like if you tell me this song, like 21 Pilots, I didn't know they were a Christian rock band, but I think they're great. So I don't know if you're branding wise, you want to make it known you're a gospel singer specifically, or if you just want to have lyrics about the Lord I heard or something like that. But it's like following your truth through your lyrics, don't let anyone change your sound is going to be a way you definitely create some future for you or some future that serves what you feel your cause is I'm also hearing with I release all that doesn't serve me you helping people at an individual one-on-one -on -one connection doesn't serve you it actually keeps you from your bigger mission which is helping the community so it's kind of like you can help people to the right resource to help them but you don't have to be responsible for helping them does that make sense like it's making me think when you're a kid and your best friend's in trouble or they have a hard home life and they're trying to lean all of their problems on you. And they're like, don't tell anyone. It has to be a secret. It has to be between me and you. So you feel as though it's your specific responsibility to help your friend get through her life circumstance. But in actuality, it was like your responsibility to tell an adult that this is happening in the home so that they can get the necessary resources. It's kind of the same thing for you. If you're helping people by giving them the shirt off your back and by, you know... Oh yeah, I'll help you with this drive and I'll help you with this fundraiser and I'll help you with this thing. And you're spreading yourself thin thinking it's the way you help everyone. That's actually taking away from like your focus. Oh, what am I trying to say? Like you can help this one person by giving them the shirt off your back or you can help organize your friends to make a canned food drive that'll help thousands of people 
it's giving me the analogy of that train and it's like do you change the train to save three people and kill the one person you know or do you save the one person you know and you kill these three people and it's kind of like you focusing again your attention on the individuals it's distracting you from saving the community and saving the masses so it's kind of like don't feel selfish because you have to save yourself before you can save other people. That's really the energy that's coming out. Empire 4 is making me think that you will feel as though being a martyr, all right? You feel as though sacrificing yourself and your own wants for everyone else is the way to go. And it's not, okay? Going off to college and leaving your family behind is not um, you abandoning them. It's not selfish. It's you gaining the knowledge necessary to help them in the end. Like if you don't go off and save yourself and have your own experience and have your own chance to learn things and flourish and, you know, add to the tool belt of knowledge that will propel you in life that will, you know, uh, you won't be able to help as much as you think you could. You're like, yeah, I'm helping the community and I'm um, working at the food bank and I'm handing out can drives. But then you go off to school and you learn knowledge that you couldn't learn by staying home. Then you realize how you can really benefit the community and what you know and you learn about gentrification and you learn about this and that and what can really help and be beneficial. And you're always growing and expanding and learning. The thing about you is when you get to the top, you're not going to be like, fuck them people at the bottom you are only getting to the top so that you can turn the hit the buzzer turn around and push everyone else up that had to be left behind but this is what i have for you pile four thank you so much for watching i can't wait to see how bright your light shines how far your ability to see people goes like most people are overlooked most people are ignored and you having this connection to community to society to the people to want to it's giving like prince of egypt moses energy and you're just kind of like i got this download i need to save you guys you know but moses had to save himself and get his mind uh clear enough to only hear you know god's voice before he was able to help other people but nevertheless this is what i have for you thank you so much for watching if it resonated with you comment down below let me know if you like the vibe subscribe to the tribe otherwise i'll see you next time bye